Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue the discussion on compressible flow. Uh, we have started with uh, one dimensional steady compressible flow equations and then uh, from there we move to the normal shock relation and we have <coughs> then towards the end of the previous discussion we have actually looked at when there is a flow is isentropic what happens to the stagnation properties and when the flow is actually across a normal shock wave then what happens to the stagnation properties. So, that is what we have already discussed. Now, moving ahead we will talk about now the oblique shock. So, uh, this is a kind of shock when we looked at the normal shock our um, uh, shock was always perpendicular to the flow field but when we talk about oblique shock. Uh, so, one can always say that uh, normal shock is a special case of the general inclined one, because uh, when the shock is inclined to a object uh, let us say in uh, two dimensional flow then uh, that is what I mean obviously, the flow has to be supersonic and for example, uh, let us say if you have a uh, kind of base like this and then you have uh, sorry you have kind of a base like this and then it goes like that. So, so there would be a inclined shock here this is the inclined shock and there is an angle to that this is called beta and there would be some angle which is delta max. So, let us say when this is an uh, kind of this is how the flow comes in uh, this is an um, wedge shape kind of geometry and this is in two dimensional flow. Uh, so, when the flow comes in a plane attached shock wave may occur here and this is with an angle some angle beta uh, and the flow Mach number and the wedge angle together. So, this is the delta is uh, so called uh, the wedge angle. So, this kind of uh, shock is called the oblique shock and it is a generally inclined one and if you think about when we say that normal shock is a special case then that is a perpendicular to the flow field obviously. So, when a supersonic flow encounters a concave corner with an angle delta there are two possibilities of attached or detached shock like uh, we can have. So, this flow is also supersonic here. Now, I can have let us say configuration like this let us say like this and the flow here is inclined there. Then uh, we can have a shock like this, this is the one which is called attached. So, this is another example of oblique shock which is attached or we can have another uh, configuration like this when uh, the shock could be like this. Still the 
Mach number incoming flow is like this, this is called the detached. So, that means when the supersonic flow you have this kind of object sitting in the flow field, uh, then the upstream flow uh, when it is supersonic then either you can have this kind of attached shock, either you can have discharge shock, but these are not obviously perpendicular to the flow field. So, these are all can be clubbed together and called as an uh, sort of an oblique shock. Now, then there could be some other possibilities uh, like another possibility could be uh, like this one, the wedge shape kind of uh, situation where the shock could be like this. Again the flow is supersonic or I could have a situation like this. when the flow could be like this. So, this is again one can say this is attached oblique shock, this is so called detached oblique shock. Okay. So, th these are the possibilities which uh, may occur there. Now, when the deflection angle, there is a maximum deflection angle which is called the delta max. So, delta max is the maximum deflection angle. So, this is a there is always exist an maximum deflection angle which is obviously one can say this is associated with Mach number it is not that it is irrespective of the Mach number because uh, depending on the Mach number this uh, deflection angle could be different. Uh, when the deflection angle let us say delta max exceeds then uh, a detached shock forms which has a curved waveform. So, this has a this is called the bow like pattern or uh, bow shock, this is called bow shock or bow like shock which is formed. So, in this case the delta is greater than delta max, that means the deflection angle which is here, this is the delta, the deflection angle is greater than delta max. So, that time you can have this kind of pattern or when it is delta less than delta max they will remain attached. Okay. So, behind this uh, bow shock or curved shock, so we can find all uh, shock solutions. So, this is the upstream of it and this point would be the downstream of it. So, we can find all possible shock solution associated with the initial Mach number m 1. So, if this side is m 1 and we can find m 2 and all sort of things here. Now, at the center of normal shock at the center a normal shock also exists when there is a bow shock there is a center could be a normal shock with subsonic flow result. As the wave front curves around the shock angle actually decreases continually with a resultant decrease in the shock strength. So, with this the strength also decreases. Eventually one reach a point where supersonic flow exists after the shock front. Now, this oblique shock there are different kind of oblique shocks which are preferred in this all engineering applications compared to normal shock. The one of the we can associate it with this oblique shock relations as we go on discussing about that, but uh, there is an fact that combination of oblique shocks is more favorable for post shock conditions like uh, so combination of oblique shock which is preferred because the post shock temperature to reduce 
or have lower post shock temperature and pressure. So, these are important. Now, this is this combination is more preferred compared to the normal shock and the reason being that across a normal shock flow will become always subsonic. So, the change in properties are quite drastic, but as we um, go in the discussion we can see that the behind the oblique shock the flow still could be supersonic or subsonic depending on the situation. Mm. So, this combination one can think about this is a good combination for design of supersonic aircraft. So, especially the intake portion which are well shaped to compress the air into the combustion chamber while minimizing the thermodynamical losses. But uh, early days this kind of supersonic jet engines which are designed using compression form of a uh, single normal shock, but, uh, but when you use a single normal shock this has some limits of operation because the uh, behind the shock the flow is going to be immediately subsonic and which has uh, drastic change in properties. Now, typical Mach number the, so one can see these things the width shape kind of patterns are used in like F 14 uh, fighter aircraft which has maximum Mach number of roughly 2.3 something like that 3.5 or something. Now, now for analyzing oblique shock let us uh, consider a particular uh, let us take this weight kind of pattern and let us say this is then this would be the shock sitting there, this is beta, this is delta. So, the flow comes in here. Uh, this is the velocity triangle for that. So, this is Mach number 1, this is beta, this is m 1 n 1 t that is a tangential component of the Mach number, uh, one is normal component, one is tangential component and then here we will have the velocity triangle like this. So, this is m 2, this angle is beta minus delta, this is m 2 t, this is m 2 n. So, we we'll take this figure where the delta is the flow deflection angle okay. and uh, beta is the shock inclination angle or rather one can say the shock has uh, the generated shock inclined to at angle beta to the flow direction. One can say that or can be said that a shock generated inclined angle to the flow direction. So, that is what one can say. Now, the flow approaches with a velocity v 1. So, this is the approach velocity or one can say upstream velocity ahead of the shock and it turned through a angle delta it passes through the shock leaving with a velocity v 2. So, this is the downstream velocity downstream of the shock. 
So, obviously, this would be associated the V 1 is associated with Mach number 1, this is Mach number 2 and there will be an angle beta minus delta which is respect to the shock. The inlet and exit velocities can be decomposed in the normal component and the tangential component where similarly we can have the velocity uh, uh, so the tangential. So, like the Mach number we can have the similarly velocity components the tangential velocity components upstream and downstream are equal. So, that means V 1 t would be V 2 t which means V 1 n is supersonic and V 2 n is subsonic, but even that V 2 is supersonic at the downstream. So, we can write this tangential component to be equal and uh, using this uh, Mach number relationship. Now, what one can write now that V 1 t is V 1 cos beta v 1 n would be v 1 sin beta and then m 1 n is m 1 sin beta which would be greater than 1 and you have one tangential component which is m 1 cos beta and m 1 is supersonic so which is greater than 1. So, these are the I mean using the velocity triangle one can easily write this similarly at the downstream location V 2 t would be V 2 cos beta minus delta V 2 normal component would be V 2 sin beta minus delta. So, normal component of the Mach number would be M 2 sin beta minus delta which is less than 1 and m 2 t which is m 2 cos beta minus delta and m 2 is also supersonic. Now, since the oblique shock can be treated as a normal shock where we have an upstream Mach number like now the since oblique shock can be treated as normal shock which having a Mach number upstream is 1, one n is one m 1. So, the normal is sin beta and a tangential component like m 1 cos beta. So, then if we treat like that like this components here we treat them as an uh, normal shock and then we can use all the then using the normal shock relation what we can write that um, we can write some relationship between delta m m 1 uh, beta m 1 like that which gives us that tan delta would be 2 cot beta m 1 square sin square beta minus 1 gamma plus 1 m 1 square minus 2 m 1 square sin square beta minus 1. Let us say if you consider a value of gamma which is 7 by 4, then tan delta become 5 m 1 square sin 2 beta minus 2 cot beta 10 plus m 1 square 7 plus 5 cos 2 beta. 
So, we get now what happens to the normal components. So, the normal components would be m 2 n square is gamma minus 1 m 1 n square plus 2 by 2 gamma m 1 n square minus gamma minus 1. Similarly, so what we can write m 2 square sin square beta minus delta would be gamma minus 1 m 1 square uh, into sin square beta plus 2 2 gamma m 1 square sin square beta minus gamma minus 1. Now, if we say for gamma is 7 by 4, what we get m 2 square equals to 36 m 1 4 sin square beta minus 5 uh, m 1 square sin square beta minus 1 into 7 m 1 square sin beta plus 5 where 7 m 1 square sin square beta minus 1 m 1 square sin square beta plus 5 and we get p 2 by p 1 which is 2 gamma m 1 square sin square beta minus gamma minus 1 gamma plus 1. So, when we use uh, for this case also for gamma is 7 by 4 this p 2 by p 1 becomes 7 by 7 m 1 square sin square beta minus 1 by 6. Similarly, T 2 by T 1 we get 2 gamma m 1 square sin square beta minus gamma minus 1 gamma minus 1 m 1 square sin square beta plus 2. So, which is gamma plus 1 m 1 sin square beta. Similarly, for gamma equals to 7 by 4, this T 2 by T 1 becomes 7 m 1 square sin square beta minus 1 m 1 square sin square beta plus 5. So, which is 36 m 1 square sin square beta. Now, the other quantity which could be also written like the density ratio uh, rho 2 by rho 1 would be uh, gamma plus 1 m 1 square sin square beta 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square sin square beta for 7 by 4 this rho 2 by rho 1 becomes 6 m 1 square sin square beta by m 1 square sin square beta plus 5. Okay. So, we can also write down the relationship for the um, stagnation condition write P 2 naught by P 1 which is um, um, like uh, you have gamma plus 1, this one can find or look at the detailed of these calculations in any of the compressible flow book. So, just I am just giving it 
or going through these things quickly because uh, this is not uh, these are all required but not the part of our detailed discussion of this course so so same thing for 7 by 4 gamma you get p not 2 by p not 1 which would be 6 m 1 square sin square beta by m 1 square 7 by 2 and sin square beta minus 1 5 by 2. So, these are the different relationship between um, I mean temperature ratio, pressure ratio, uh, density ratio and stagnation condition. So, this actually one can have this relations or there could be a nice uh, co, uh, diagram uh, what can happen between m 1 beta delta using that where you can get a diagram of that kind. For example, I am just if I draw it qualitatively. So, this is m 1 and this side is uh, beta which starts from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and so on and this side 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 like that. So, you have um, kind of again as I said, so you get this kind of curve like that. So, these are for different increasing delta and this is beta and this is m 1. So, this is called the delta beta Mach number relationship plot which is quite important because one can use this um, graph to find out the conditions for a particular Mach number, what could be the um, deflection angle, what could be the other angle. Similarly, you can have the another plot which can also give you the idea about uh, the downstream condition. So, if I plot that which goes from 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35 and so on, this is the delta and this side it would be 1 minus Mach number inverse. So, this is called Mach number parameter. So, you get this goes from minus 1 1.7, 1.5, 1.25, 1.75, 0.25, 0.25 like that. So, qualitatively you get curves like this. So, these are again this direction is increasing m 1. So, instead of using those uh, complicated equations, one can use these two curve where when you have the upstream map number from there, uh, use, uh, for a given value of delta or wave angle, you can find out the beta. And then when you or rather for beta given a beta and m 1, you can find out delta either of them and with that when you um, come to the downstream of the system where uh, you need to find out the uh, Mach number at the back of the uh, these things uh, like the downstream of the shock, then uh, this is a Mach number parameter called the Mach number parameter which is not directly M 2 which is written as 1 minus m 2 1 by m 2 and then the qualitative plot would look like this. I mean I, I would suggest 
you guys should look at the book properly to see this uh, diagram with proper numbers because these are again I mean repeatedly I have been mentioning this, this is, these are qualitative plot which I am trying to draw just to give you an idea how they look like, what are these parameters all about and how one can find out the details. Coming back to that once you identified, so this is um, the upstream situation which you can get and once you find out either uh, beta or delta depending on Mach number using that here is a relationship between delta m1 and m2. So, this is m2, m1 and delta relationship curve. So, you can use that and actually find out the Mach number downstream of the shock. So, this is how the oblique shock relations can be used. It not necessarily one has to sort of uh, mag up those or keep remembering those uh, equations like this complicated equations, this is not expected. In um, I mean these are the handbooks or tables which are available for oblique shock relations or this kind of plots or the graph which are very, very handy for designers to use this relationship to find out upstream and downstream properties. And once you find out the Mach number then rest of the things can be followed very easily. And so, that is what uh, will Mm, pretty much want to just touch upon the discussion uh, on uh, oblique shock. We will stop here and continue on the other uh, portion in the next class.